Hey, Snackers, this is Kareem Iskander. Hey, everyone, Matt DiNapoli here. Welcome to episode 155 of Snack Minute. This week, we're joined by our friend Erica. Uh, she's a first-timer, so uh, we'll get our little special question in at the end. Uh, but Erica, would you mind introducing yourself, and then we'll jump into um, using Copilot to code for uh, Cisco security products. Thanks. Yeah, so my name is Erica Dietrich. I'm a developer advocate supporting the Cisco security portfolio. And I have a vast background of experiences from being a network engineer in TAC to a software engineer at startups. So I've seen the gamut. <laughs> nice. Well, welcome. Um, I know that you did a session like this at Cisco Live. And so I thought if we could do a little compressed version for our snackers, it'd be really cool. And um, you know, can you kind of give us a little background about what Copilot is and then uh, maybe jump into some of the code examples you have uh, for us today? Absolutely. So uh, AI is the big thing right now, and I was looking for ways to have AI actually help our engineers and make their lives easier, hence uh, why I got into AI coding assistance. So GitHub Copilot is one such example of an AI coding assistant. And the features of these coding assistants vary, but they are most associated with code generation. And there's different ways that that comes about. And that's kind of what I want to show you today are those practical use cases. Awesome. Yeah, let's see what you got. Okay, great. So um, I've got my IDE open here. This is just a sample repo that I have with Cisco Umbrella. Uh, and in this particular script, I am trying to use the Cisco Umbrella API to find uncommon domains in this person's network. Um, so the exact contents of the script aren't all that important, but the first thing I want to show you is uh, the built-in slash commands of our coding assistant. So let's pretend that you inherited this script and you want to know what it does. Um, so I can highlight any section of the script. I can control that uh, control I to bring up the copilot prompt, and then I can say slash explain. It takes a few seconds. But within a matter of seconds, I am going to get an in-depth description of what that code snippet does, a summary at the bottom, and the references uh, for these responses. So that's just one example of a slash command. Um, I also used a, the slash docs command to create a sample readme, as you can see here. Um, if you take a look at this readme, something that I like to tell people when they're using assistance is that they're not the brain, right? They're the assistant. And so even when you are using it for these things, um, it's meant to help you and to expedite the process, right? I might come in here and say, I want to add a little more detail or to add an additional section. Or even just make sure that it's right. Exactly right. right. A lot of the times that it's not, it's not exactly what you meant to say. And so if you, if you tab and you enter it, you like your steps don't make sense as you review it. So, yeah, at least you got it. It got you started. Like that's always the hardest thing for me, is. especially with writing docs. Yeah, I'm like, I'm gonna write docs. <laughs> I actually find it really hard. So I we that um and this this goes in line with Copilot because I find it really hard when when I'm writing a documentation or I'm writing a tutorial to open up with an introduction to what I'm trying mm. to do, and so like it captures from the title and just a, a brief description of what I'm doing. It gives me a write me a nice introduction of of what the learner is gonna do. So it it comes in handy and, and super handy with basic coding as well. Yeah, that's cool. Absolutely. And they're not perfect, right? So that's my job as a developer advocate is I say, hey, it's useful for these scenarios and just stay away, don't waste your time for these other ones. What scenarios have you seen this where Copilot was not really useful? Uh, lots of people want to take an AI assistant like Copilot and try to scaffold all the code. Like, oh, just write me a script that does X, Y, and Z. And mm -hmm. we are not there yet. That is very unreliable, no matter how specific your prompt is. So, so it's more it's it's more useful in situations where um, you can be a little bit more specific about maybe a a, a module or or a function of some kind. So like, like write a write a um, API call to. Uh, umbrella and then uh, for the uncommon domains, write a for loop that loops through them and prints out the the IP address of those domains. Yeah, exactly. You got it right. So the smaller of a task and more well defined of a task you have Copilot, the more likely it's going to be successful. And the other thing that is really cool about Copilot or hopefully some of the other systems you're using is that it has contextual awareness. So instead of just plopping in code from Stack Overflow that may or may not be relevant or work. Um, Copilot is going to look at your entire repo when giving you code. So the more code you have in a repo, the better those predictions become. So it does local analysis plus what is out there on the public internet? Absolutely. Yep. Oh, that's yeah, really it does. cool. 
So the local analysis is basically just to understand what it is you're trying to do. <laughs> okay. Yeah, gotcha. and actually, it's cool because uh, as you write, as you're cutting code, and if you have your token or your your authorization in there, if you're building your post request or whatever it is, it'll auto complete with either the variable that that you name that token or paste that token in. Oh, that's it. nice. Yep. So because you don't have to, you don't have to go back and go like, what did I call that thing? And blah blah blah. Exactly. Um, and the, cool. but the other thing is that I've also noticed doing using Copilot, and I'm. I'm picking on it because it's easier to to say the negative than the yeah. awesome positive that it brings in. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. But like some some of our API documentations, especially from in uh, Cisco's API documentations, when when we're talking to to controllers, there are some requests that are Copilot assumes it's a post request, mm. but they are put <laughs> mm -hmm. in yep. Iraqi, for example, right? And so like. Uh, updating, uh, creating an SSID, right, on your network. That's a put request. It's not a post request. It assumes that you're creating something, so it puts a post. It took me maybe a good two hours to figure out why my API call is is broken, and it's just, oh, it assumed it's a post, and I assumed it was correct. So, so this is where then you use RAG. Yep. <laughs> right. <laughs> exactly. Um, are there any examples you, you wanted to show us today that you thought were particularly interesting and the audience might like? Um, sure. Um, so I showed you the slash commands. Um, let me, I'm like having a really hard time with how big this is. Like, <laughs> all right. So let me just create a sample file really quick. Um, so let's say that you were going to write a script again with the Cisco umbrella API as an example. Um, and maybe I am not frequently writing scripts, but I know that I'm going to start with, um, sys. And you can see that it automatically, it has an idea based on the very first library that I'm importing, other libraries that might be useful to me. Um, I really should have started with request because that's a uh, kind of a giveaway of what I'm trying to do here. So request library for making an API call, et cetera. So this is a basic example of that, right? Okay. And then you can see if I move down, it automatically, you know, assumes what I'm trying to do, right? And in the beginning, these guesses are not going to be as accurate as when I have more to my script. I got you. Um, but this is called the predictive text feature. So that's one way to use Copilot. The other thing I like showing people is what I call comment-driven development. You know, C, copyright that. <laughs> but uh, it's essentially where you understand the logical flow of a script and you don't have to actually write any code. So import all the libraries. I need to work with APIs in Python. Oh, it didn't work. But, oh, actually, well, I guess, I guess, uh, let's see. Here we go. Yep. I was thinking it was going to automatically generate it, but this is what I was expecting. Um, so anyway, I just hit enter to the next line, tab to accept it, and I can just keep going for as long as I need these libraries. And these are libraries I frequently work with. Interesting. That's awesome. Erica, this is great, and it, all, all it takes is just basically setting up Copilot and getting a Copilot account on my GitHub. Is that right, or how or does that come comes built in with Visual Studio Code? Yep. So uh, it's compatible with multiple IDEs and multiple languages, but you have to have a GitHub account and then subscribe to Copilot. So I'm on the individual tier, which I believe is ten dollars a month. Hopefully, I'm quoting that right. And uh, then you come in and install it as an extension. So Erica, uh, unfortunately we are running out of time. Um, I did want to mention to the audience out there that, um, you know, as you dive, dive into code, uh, code assistance, I think the lesson we're taking away for, from this is they're very cool. Yeah. They can help, help us out with a lot of stuff, but that keyword is help. You know, there's a, like a caveat emptor to all of this, which is, you know, make sure that the things that's generating are correct. Don't depend on it for everything, but it yes. uh, can definitely help you in your day to day. So that's really awesome. Uh, Erica, before we let you go, um, you're a first timer and we ask all our first timers, what superpower would they like to have and why? <laughs> I thought about this and it's kind of a cheat, but it would be a superpower to create superpowers <laughs> so that I can chameleon my way to and adapt to any situation. He, he just unlocked infinite loop right now. <laughs> yes. <laughs> we got to put the, we got to put the chains on the genie and say, no, yeah, no, yeah. no, you only get no, one. No, that's a good one. That's a good one. I know that, that we haven't, I don't think we've heard that one before, so I'm going to take it. Uh, no one else is allowed to pick that one though. We're going to take that off the, off the table going forward. Yeah. Yeah. That's cool. <laughs> yep. 
Erica, thank you so much for this. Um, snackers, go check out whatever code assistant fits your fancy or maybe even get up copilot. Kareem, thanks. Thanks again. And uh, Snackers, we'll see you next week. Yeah. Thank you, Snackers. Erica, this is great. Thank you. Take care.